Hi, welcome to Storytime with Will. I'm Will Saris. I'm an audiobook narrator and voice actor. And today we're going to be reading Pickle Chiffon Pie by Jolly Roger Bradfield. A long time ago, there was a fat little king who ruled over the land as far as he could see in every direction. He was very wise, and his kingdom was a happy one. His wife, the queen, kept his castle spotless and saw that his robes were cleaned and pressed. She was a very good cook and made him a pickle chiffon pie every day. But everybody has problems. The king had a daughter. Oh, she was very nice and did whatever he asked her to, but she was also very beautiful, and every prince in the neighborhood wanted to marry her. Every day they came to the palace with flowers and gifts for her. To be polite, she would ask them all to stay for supper, and that meant there would be less pickle chiffon pie for the king. That was his problem. Finally, one day, the king decided that his daughter should marry one of the princes. Then at least there would be fewer people at the dinner table each night. He called for the three nicest princes and told them that they would be put to a test and that the winner could marry the princess. The first, Prince Musselbaum, was very strong and brave. The princess liked him because he was tall and had wavy hair and freckles. The second, Prince Wellred, was very smart. He could count up to 684, and he read books three inches thick. The princess liked him, too, because he read beautiful stories to her and sometimes played music under her window at night. The third, Prince Bernard, wasn't very strong, or very handsome, or very smart. But the princess liked him best of all. She didn't really know why she liked him. Perhaps it was because he had a big smile and a funny nose. It's hard to tell about princesses. The king told the three princes this. You will go into the huge forest at the edge of the kingdom for three days. As you know, it is full of gazoos, fairies, dim doozles, all sorts of unusual things. The one who brings back the most unusual, the most marvelous, the most wonderful thing may marry the princess. Now remember, be back in three days. Musselbaum was delighted. Being stronger and braver than the others, he thought he would surely win. With a shout, he jumped onto his horse and galloped off in the direction of the forest. At first, he didn't see anything unusual. Just a few small dragons, a troll peeking out of a tree, a medium-sized giant. The usual things one sees in a forest. But finally, looking behind a huge boulder, he did see something different. A green and blue dragon with three heads toasting marshmallows. Now there's something you don't see every day, thought Prince Musselbaum, but I have two more days. I'll look a bit more. On the second day, he saw a four-wheeled dim doozle with a pipe and wearing glasses. Now there's something different, thought Musselbaum. I've never seen a dim doozle wearing glasses before, but I have one more day. I'll look a bit more. On the third day, he saw something really different. A huge lion juggling six cans of root beer soup. He was wearing a velvet vest and roller skates. This must surely be the most wonderful thing in the whole forest, cried Prince Musselbaum. Bravely, he grabbed the lion's tail and started dragging him back toward the castle. Meanwhile, Prince Wellred was searching, too. The first day, he spied a witch who could turn people into frogs, which really wasn't so special, except that she could do it with her eyes shut and one hand behind her back. Now there's something you don't see every day, thought Wellred, but I have two more days. I'll look a bit more.
On the second day, he saw a 16-footed gazoo that had a different kind of shoe on each foot. Now there's something different, thought Wellred. I've never seen a gazoo with more than seven feet, but I have one more day left. I'll look a bit more. On the third day, he came upon something really different. A giant with a green beard playing chopsticks on two pianos. This must surely be the most wonderful thing in the forest, cried Prince Wellred. I've never heard that tune before. He cleverly told the giant what a fine piano player he was and talked him into going back to the castle to play for the king. Now, let's not forget Prince Bernard. He was searching too. On the first day, he met an ogre so ugly that he scared the leaves right off the trees. Now there's something you don't see every day, thought Bernard, but he might frighten the princess if I brought him back. I have two more days, I'll look a bit more. On the second day, he discovered a tiny house tucked behind a tree. He peeked in and saw that it was filled with mice, all busily painting the most wonderful pictures. Now there's something different, thought Bernard, but it really wouldn't be right to stop such happy, hard-working little fellows right in the middle of their work. I have one more day. I'll look a bit more. On the third day, he saw something really different. A three-nosed snozzle with fuzzy ears and an orange polka dot necktie, and it was busy making pickle chiffon pie. This must surely be the most wonderful thing in the forest, he cried. I thought the queen was the only one who could make pickle chiffon pie. Oh, the king will be so happy. With that, he grabbed the snozzle's necktie and started leading it back toward the castle. Prince Bernard had never been happier in his whole life. It was hard work pulling the three-nosed snozzle through the forest, but Prince Bernard didn't mind. He was sure he would win the contest to marry the princess. But he wasn't quite so happy when he saw how sad the snozzle looked. Don't feel bad, said Bernard. You'll like living at the palace. It's much nicer than this dark old forest. And anyway, I have to take you back in order to marry the princess. Then Bernard noticed several tiny snozzles peering out from behind the trees. Why, aren't they cute, he said. Are, are they your children? The three-nosed snozzle nodded, with big, wet tears coming into its eyes. What will happen to them when you're gone? Do they have anyone to take care of them? The snozzle shook its head sadly. Prince Bernard sat down on a log to think. He thought of his love for the princess. He thought of the snozzle's love for its children. For a long time, it was very quiet and still in the forest. Finally, with a sigh, the prince let go of the snozzle's necktie and watched it scamper off. Then he turned and walked slowly toward the castle. His three days were up. When all the princes were called to appear before the king, Musclebaum had a big smile on his face. He was sure he would win with his juggling lion. Wellred was smiling too. He was just as sure that he would win when the king heard the giant play his two pianos. Bernard hung his head sadly as he stood empty-handed behind the others. The king was delighted with Musclebaum's lion. Wonderful, he cried as the lion juggled 23 apples and a bottle of ketchup. And when Wellred's giant played chopsticks on his two pianos, the king laughed and clapped his hands in delight. How wonderful, he cried, so unusual. Then he turned to Bernard. And what have you brought back, he asked. Prince Bernard bowed low before the king. He hoped that no one noticed the tears in his eyes 
as he raised his head and said softly, "'Nothing, Your Majesty.' He told of meeting the ugly ogre who might have frightened the princess. He told of seeing the amazing mice whose paintings he could not bring himself to interrupt. He told of the tiny snozzle children that he could not bear to leave in the forest alone. There was silence in the castle. No one spoke for a long time. Bernard wished that he could run and hide. Everyone was looking at him, all except the princess and the queen. They were whispering to the king. The king nodded his head and smiled. Bernard, he said in a loud voice, you have won the right to marry the princess. But, but why, your majesty? I didn't bring back anything, said Bernard. Oh, yes, you did, my son, said the king. You brought back a story of kindness and love and consideration for others. Truly the most wonderful thing of all. You'll make a fine husband for my daughter. When Bernard married the princess, Wellred's giant played the wedding march, and Musclebaum's lion put on a special exhibition to entertain the guests. And guess who sent Bernard and the princess the biggest pickle chiffon pie anyone ever saw for a wedding present. That's right, the three-nosed snozzle with the fuzzy ears and the orange polka dot tie. I really hope you can bring kindness, love, and consideration for others to everyone that you come in contact with, especially at this time. Listen, like, and subscribe to the channel. I'll have another one of these up tomorrow. And until then, stay safe and stay healthy.